damage done. It's not really the optimal adventuring weather. Fingers crossed. Let's wait for some turtles. Dearest sunlight, I am calling you across the old room. Sunlight, dearest sunlight, I would like to come out of the womb. Cars just keep on going past and they can't get good sound for you guys. Hack of life, get a carabiner for your car keys and house keys. You can clip it to your belts, you can clip it to your jeans, it's amazing. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Oh, this video I've been wanting to film for so long but it's taken me a lot of self-motivation to go and book it and do it and actually fulfill it, also time and you know, ability. So today I'm actually traveling between Brisbane in Queensland Southeast and Bundaberg, which is about four and a half hours north along the coast, south of Gladstone. It's well known for its rum and it's also known for turtles, which is actually the main reason I'm going up today. I'm actually taking a three day trip here solo. I will be staying in a hostel while I'm up there. Bloody cars and valleys and uh. I am going up to see the turtles. Mon Repos is a turtle conservation center up there and I have been past it before but not within turtle season. Right now it is January. It is peak log ahead turtle hatching season and it has been on my bucket list for so long to go and see them. However, Mon Repos, they do run tours. But because your girl doesn't really plan these things very far in advance, like I booked a trip late last night, but because Mon Repos is quite famous and it is peak tourist season and it is loggerhead turtle hatching season, unfortunately there were no tours for me to book. So I am gonna try and hit the center today, see if there are any last minute bookings or cancellations. Similarly, I do think I have an understanding of where I might be able to find the turtles myself, but for the next three days, come along with me and see what I get up to. But I'm really, really keen to another solo adventure. Let's get going. Feels like all of me and we dance all alone. Come on in. So stop number one on this trip is actually the Glasshouse Mountains. The Glasshouse Mountains are about one and a half to two hours north of Brisbane. It is a volcanic environment. Around here you see a lot of the intrusive lava plugs formed back in the breakup of Gondwana. I do intend to do a full video dedicated to this region so stay tuned for that. It is just beautiful scenery. The roads are fantastic, the lookouts are fantastic and there's so many little quaint historical towns along the way. I'm about to head into Montville, but with the ultimate goal of getting to the Kenilworth Bakery. I'm so keen. Let's get to it. I've actually decided to move on pretty quickly from Montville just because I'm looking at the time and I really want to get to the Kenilworth Bakery and I know that they tend to sell out the later you get there. So it's a 50 minute drive from Montville, which should get me there around 1040. So let's get going. I'm really keen to try these donuts. These donuts, I'm so excited. Let's try the golden gay time. It's so heavy. Golden gay time donut. It's quite cakey and chewy. More like a sweet bread that you get from an Asian bakery. The caramel's coming through. I don't think this one's stuffed. I think this is just topped. So I'm gonna try next. Next up is the white chocolate salted caramel and macadamia. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I like that one. Next one's Kinder Surprise. So, so Kinder Surprise on top, and that's I think what Kinder Surprise tastes like. I say, oh, this one's stuffed too. Mmm. I think that's Nutella inside. That's decent. I still prefer the white chocolate macadamia one, pistachio and salted caramel. Very pistachio. Again, not stuffed and quite chewy. So much sugar on my hands. Cookies and cream is the next one. Oh. Very sweet on the that part, not very cookie or cream. It's 
this one is stuffed with the cookies. Quite chewy. And then last but not least, the custard. Let's try the custard. Kind of flavorless. Doesn't taste like vanilla. Doesn't really taste like anything. I want to rip this one open because I don't want the. Oh, actually, one. Oh. Oh. She's only a little bit stuffed. Mm. We'll take that or leave it. This one, the white chocolate, salted caramel, and macadamia is definitely my favorite. That's a really good donut there. This is the damage that was done for it. Damage done. So I've just arrived in the historic town of Maribra, about an hour and a half south of Bundaberg itself. It is warm here. It's about 40 degrees. She's a hot one. I've just stopped for a bit of lunch on the banks of the Mary River and I'm taking in all of this town, both the historical side, there's a lot of history to this town. The colonial buildings are phenomenal. Um, but this area also recently got flooded a few months ago in the severe Queensland flooding event and you can definitely see the remnants along the banks of just debris and trees and things where they shouldn't be so I'm very fortunate for the weather that I'm seeing it for now but yeah it is a stark reminder of how quickly these sort of places can change and how affected they are by weather events so Look how they have to barricade off the tree because of the falling seed pods. One tree that I have to point out for you guys is the fig, the Australian fig tree. Look at this. These are the roots. They're huge and they actually grow down from the branches. So instead of growing up, the tree roots grow down. And then they create these labyrinth of mazes. So they create a labyrinth maze that you can walk through. Pretty cool. Look at them. Just snakes down. This is a banana tree, and I wonder if there's any bananas. Doesn't look like it. So this is the Mary River, and this whole area flooded about six months ago and devastated the community and area. It's hard to imagine. I miss, what have you got? So I've just gotten to Bundy and it is hot, like 32 degrees at 6 p.m. So it's hot, it's muggy. Um, no luck with the turtle encounters, the actual ones from Mom Repos, but the hostel that I'm staying at, there's an amazing manager here and he actually knows the area really well and actually takes a few tours. He doesn't have any spaces tonight, but he did tell me where I can go find them. I am going to chase turtles. He said after 8 p.m. tonight, so let's see how we go. I'm here on the Bundaberg coast and I'm hopeful tonight to see some loggerhead turtles. It is the end of nesting season and the beginning of hatching season so I'm not sure what to expect from tonight. The lovely gentleman at the hostel that I'm staying at did tell me where to go so I followed his directions and ended up on this really secluded beach. So fingers crossed we can find some. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to another day here in Bundaberg. As you can see, the rain did follow us from last night to this morning. And uh, well, 
it's not really the optimal adventuring weather. I've come down here to the Bundaberg coastline in an attempt to find either some snorkeling spots for today or for the future and to find some of these rock pools that I've heard so much about. Let's talk about last night though. Last night, yes, I didn't get a chance to see the turtles. Yes, it started to absolutely rain down cats and dogs. However, the volunteers at the location that I went to were absolutely amazing and gave me such good insight to both the turtles, the conservation work, and some of the issues. What I did learn is that, and I'm glad they corrected me on it, was don't use red light. In fact, don't use any light at all. Turtles are incredibly sensitive to their environment, particularly light and sound sound in the water not on land i did learn that they actually can't hear on land correct me if i'm wrong but that was a really cool fact to learn but i was told to turn off my light completely and what we did is we actually just stood on the observation deck in complete darkness with nobody on the beach because that can also scare them off however unfortunately the lightning the storm the rain the thunder was just too intense last night so i did end up bailing at about 11 30 p.m at night i will be attempting tonight again this rain better bloody hold off because i need to see some turtles but came for some coastline adventuring today. I don't know whether I'm actually going to get in the water. The visibility for snorkeling is zero. It's so murky. It's so caught up. It's been raining the past few days here. So all of the storm water has washed into the ocean. All the sand has been kicked up, all the sediments. So visibility is nothing. And it's also still storming. So not the safest weather to go snorkeling in. But let's see what we can see on the beautiful Bundaberg coastline. And... Let me tell you, anything I don't get around to doing today, I will be coming back here in the future. This entire rock plateau formation is just basalts. Look at that. That's crazy. A whole dried magma. It's so cool when you think about it like that. Was it an actual flow here? Because it looks like it. Look at that. Look at the formations. Some little rock pools. I don't think they're going to be deep enough to swim in, but there's other ones down the other end of the beach. This is actually insane, these formations. I just can't get over these formations. Look at it, the central, and then all of the layers. I can't get over that. So cool. Let's buy a bit of a rock pool here. Keeping some of the coral down there also. that oh my goodness it's a sea cave in there that's crazy oh. look, at, look at it coming out from that little cave in there thinking that this is the spot here i'm looking at the murkiness of the water so right there there's a lot of suspended stuff after the rain that's still continuing and just the weather in general, which means the visibility down there will be quite low. It's beautiful conditions in terms of the swell. I mean, look at it. There's, it's, it's a mill pond right now. So the conditions are perfect, apart from the fact that it's overcast, it's been raining, it's continuing to rain, and the visibility down there will be so low that you actually wouldn't see much sea life in general but I definitely think that this is the spot to do it. Definitely the spot to come. What the hell is that? I can hear something. Can you hear that? I don't know. Rock pool acquired. Hello, Mr. Cramp. So, no, you can, no, you can look. It's more the awkward. Yeah. So, so we're now back at the location we were last night to try and see some of these turtles again. As you can see, the weather hasn't cleared up, but it's no longer raining and it's not storming. So, fingers crossed, it does hold off. Sun last light isn't for a while now I think it's about in an hour so we've got to wait for that and then wait for it to get fully dark to actually see and 
hopefully we're going to see some turtles coming out of the ocean. Now a big thing that I learned from the volunteers last night was do not go on the beach when you're waiting for the turtles otherwise they can actually see you even if it's pitch black and they won't come ashore. Similarly no lights, no nothing so we're actually going to stand on this platform and wait until we see some coming out of the water. At that point the volunteers will actually come and help us go and see them so then we don't disturb them. The turtles can do their nesting and we get to see them doing it and we don't disturb them. So fingers crossed, let's wait for some turtles. So welcome to day three of three of my little road trip up north. I'm here in Harvey Bay trying to soak up some sun. It seems like the first time I can do this in a few days. Unfortunately for me, the weather just really hasn't been on my side for this trip. It's been overcast and quite torrential rain throughout the whole trip, which has been kind of annoying, but I did get to suss some snorkeling spots yesterday, which I do intend to come back and check out when the weather's better, as well as really go and explore those rock pools and try and come up for the turtle hatching season so right now it's a turtle laying season the end of it and it's about to become the hatching season so i might actually come up here in a few weeks to check out what that looks like but i was so happy with last night i'm so happy that we got there slightly earlier and we actually got to see that loggerhead turtle at sunset a few other things that you can do in Bundaberg while you're up here is the Bundaberg rum distillery the town is known for it the rum is named after the town I've already been there so I chose not to do that on this trip as well as it's peak season everything has to be booked weeks in advance hence why it didn't even cross my mind to even do it I will definitely be making further trips up here in the future though Lady Musgrave Island is an island accessible from the coast of Bundaberg and it's one place where I really really want to snorkel so I have to book a day trip for that that will be in another adventure but it's definitely on the bucket list anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video I just wanted to see what was up here over a two and a half three day period to see what was possible and to really just suss out the area for future adventures so if you guys enjoy this video don't forget to follow along and hit that subscribe button down below and also don't forget to smash that like button as it really helps my channel grow and it helps me get more videos out to you guys but i'll catch you guys in the next adventure This one.